Alrighty, welcome to the Power Max No Holds Barred Vintage Cube. So this is a vintage cube that has, like you can see from Tezzer, it has Time Vault, it has Demonic Consultation, it has Initiative, it has everything busted. Let's see how this plays out. First pick, there's a fourth Eorlingus here. There's a Balance, a Parallax Wave from the Catacombs. I think fourth is actually a little bit worse in a world where there's all these busted combos, but I'm still going to take it. Fourth Eorlingus is just so good. Second pick, mm, so this is a Limb Duels Vault. Let's you look at the top five, put them in any order, and then you can pay a life to, to look at another top five until you find what you need. There's Prismatic Vista as well. There's also Shieldred. I mean, I think Shieldred is decent, but I think I'd rather just take Prismatic Vista. It doesn't Shieldred doesn't go all that well with uh, Fourth Eorlingus, so... And honestly, I just think Shieldred's just okay, especially in a, in a higher power format, so... Decent enough start, but uh, let's see what we can get. All right, and here there's a Kiki Jiki because uh, Pester might Splinter Twins into. There's a Misty Rainforest, but I'm going to take Swords to Plowshares. I think even in a combo heavy cube, Swords is still pretty busted. So I will take Swords over Misty, No More Lies, Kiki Jiki, Duress. This is looking a little fair for this, but uh, we'll, we'll see. Mm, now, huh. Unmask, it's kind of like a pitch card duress or thought Caesar, I guess. There's a Troxa, there's a Mishra's Bobble, Guide of Souls, Deep Cavern Bat. I kind of want Deep Cavern Bat. I think Hand Disruption is pretty good. I have a Prismatic Beast to maybe splash for it. I don't know, I want something that can interact with my opponents. Now there's a Brain Freeze, but I'm not really in the market for that so much. But what would I take otherwise? <laughs> Boldar and Epicure, I guess I could take Unearth. I'll just draft like I'm going to get Alerth, just like I always do. Um, I mean, Unearth is good with a Deep Cavern Bat. All right, if I end up like Mardu Tempo, like Black-White Splashing for Theorlingus, Unearth I think will be pretty good. Maybe that, that uh, Tide Hollow Sculler will wheel as well. And then this pack, well, there's a Necromancy. I think, I think I'd rather have Necromancy than Kari Zev or Krabomination. If I get that Lurus, I can dish it. There's also Soul Guide Lantern. I mean, Soul Guide Lantern is also good... You know, there's like Orox Salvagers combo. There's obviously animate stuff, but I think Necromancy is powerful enough that I'm willing to to gamble on that. And then here, oh, Chain of Smog. This goes with Witherbloom Apprentice or uh, the three two Sedgemore Witch, where you just copy it over and over again and keep triggering Magecraft. I could take Life Death and then take another step towards the reanimate stuff. I don't think I want Once Upon a Time. Burst Lightning's just whatever. All right, I'll take that. I, I could have taken Chain of Smog there. I'm not sure. Oh, now I'll take Bitter Triumph. I like that more than Collective Brutality or Black Cleave Cliffs. And I kind of do have a just decent reanimator start. All right, I, I don't mind that. Backdooring into it after fourth year Lingus Swords to Plashers, but hey, you know, whatever works. And now I'll probably take Season Pyro. Though from the Catacombs is great. I do have two reanimation spells and Unearth as kind of a third. And Unearth is also really good with Season Pyro. So let's just take Season Pyro here. I don't think that Atrox is going to wheel, unfortunately. And then here, there's a Walking Ballista, Limduel's Vault, Kellen Planner Trail Blizzard. So one mana, two one. You pay two, and when it hits them, you exile the top card of your library. You can play it this turn. And you pay three after that, it becomes a three two double striker. All right, I guess I'm in. I don't think Walking Ballista is too big of a loss. I could take Grim or Kiki Jiki. This doesn't really look like a Kiki Jiki deck, and I don't think it's an iteration deck either. Ooh, Concealing Curtains, Unmask, or Faithless Looting. These are all actually pretty relevant. I kind of think Faithless Looting because I have three reanimate spells. It feels like I could actually go that way. Now Voldar and Epic here. And now I guess I'll take a Tendrils. I, I don't know. I'm not playing the Peat Land. All right, pretty strong into Red Black here. Maybe splashing forth and swords, depending on uh, what we get. Let's see how pack two goes. Could use some big creatures. Oh, there's a Bombardiers, a Bowmasters, Comet, Stellar Pup, Palace Dealer. Yeah, this powerful cube. I'll just take Bombardiers. I think it's better than Bowmasters, and I have, like, Unearth is great with it. Reanimating is just great, and it's good throwing these things, throwing the clue or the, the, the blood token. Comet is also a very strong card, but I think Bombardiers is just nuts. So let's take the Bomba. And then here, there's an Ancient Tomb. This is a pretty bad Ancient Tomb deck. There's the Splinter Twin. There's Arid Mesa, Dark Ritual. <laughs> there's the Witherbloom Apprentice. Uh, I think I'll just take Arid Mesa. This is like a perfect fix for it. Like, it, it's already good. And if I get a red-black duel, which I'm obviously looking for, it's going to be even better. 
And then Scalding Tarn or, oh, I could take a Johnny. A Johnny Bombardier's is just disgusting. You throw the token, flip a Johnny, you have a red permanent. It just does everything. Passageway Seer is also great. It gets initiative. Name Sticker is good, but I don't look like the best Name Sticker deck. I actually think I'm going to take a Johnny here. I just think it's just that powerful, and I've got ways to bring it back. And now I take Archon to reanimate. All right. We are doing it. By the way, if you're wanting to learn more about this cube, uh, a couple days ago, a week ago, whatever, put up a video um, by Chris Wolf, the designer of the cube, and he goes over it. So you can take a look on the channel for that if you'd like. Here there's an Emrakul, which I don't have any of the reanimates that work with Emrakul. There's Fire Covenant and there's Unholy Heat as well as Dark Confidant. Pretty clear Fire Covenant at this point. Uh, I think having a one-sided Wrath is pretty sick. So... All right, this is looking like a pretty nice just mid-range deck with a little bit of a combo finish. I mean, I could go for another animate spell. I know animate dead itself is gone, but even if I don't get it, it feels like I've got a good, like, small game here. Huh. On that note, I think I'm just going to take Headliner Scarlet over Valgavoth and Troll or Imperial Seal. Because Headliner Scarlet looks like it's just going to be good at this deck's main game plan. And then here... I don't really want Wheel of Fortune that much. I think I'll just take K Command. Killing Artifacts is also pretty nice in this cube. Definitely could use more Hand Disruption. I have this Deep Cavern Bat, and uh, I guess we've already seen Duress and Tide Hollow Sculler go. Inquisition, Thought Seeds would both be pretty nice. Him to Turok maybe, though. I could use some more Fixing, too. Uh, luckily, I haven't seen Blood Crypt or Badlands. Those would be very high priorities. Oh, Kite Sail Freebooter is great. Two mana, one, two flying. Basically, Deep Cavern Bat. Um, it does not hit non-creature, which is a lot worse, but still, I think that's better than Archon of Emeria for this deck. I'll, I'll splash white for these three really high-impact cards, and I think that's probably good. Here, oh, I could take Through the Breach. I don't know that I'll play it, but I'm not playing the rest of these cards. And uh, Breach is pretty good with Archon. Oh, look, there's a Dark Ritual and a Simeon Spirit Guide and a Pentad Prism. Huh. This actually is not the best Dark Ritual deck, though it is good with Through the Breach. Pentad Prism is three colors, and it can throw it with Bombardiers, and it ramps up nicely to, like, fourth Theorlingus. I think I'm going to take that, given the where we're at. Oh, Name Sticker. I'll take Name Sticker. I've got a couple things to go with it now, and I just like Name Sticker a lot in general. Okay, okay. Could use some more fixing and more hand disruption, and I guess maybe, like, a little more reanimate support, because I have two animates and one big creature and a couple discard outlets. Uh, and that's not a bad combination. Four discard outlets, a big creature, two animates, but uh, could use like one more big creature and maybe one more animate. Ooh, Fear of Missing Out, a little FOMO. That's another animate or discard outlet that's also strong. And then I'll just take Dark Confidant here. Uh, if, if we're playing against combo, oh wow, late troll too. All right, and Sarah Paragon's not a zero, but I don't think I want it. Though actually this Rite of Flame, now that I'm looking at it, could be kind of interesting. Okay. I mean, we're a little power light for a power max cube, but if I get like another discard spell and another big creature, wouldn't mind too much. Oh, wow. Entomb, Raghavan, the One Ring, and Badlands. Huh. There's also Oriok Salvages for that LED we saw. And Magda as well. As much as I want Badlands, I don't know that I can justify taking it here. I think I've got to just take... Ragavan or the One Ring? They're both pretty good. This looks like a really good Ragavan deck. I think I'm just going to take Ragavan here. It's just so strong when you open on that. And then this pack, Demonic Consultation. Wow, what a weird <laughs> art. This is the one that you exile your deck. It's really good with uh, Thassa's Oracle. I think I'll just take Snuff Out. I could take Godless Shrine, though. I might actually need to do that. I have Swords to Plowshares and Bitter Triumph and Fire Covenant. I have some good removal. Godless Shrine makes Arid Mesa into a black untapped duel and is just a white-black duel when you draw it. Plus it makes Troll of Kazadub into white. Yeah. I just took the Raghavan over to Badlands. Now I'll take the duel. And then here, Dreadfugue. You get a mana cost two or less card. I think I actually want to take Flage. It might seem a little odd given how powerful this cube is, but... I found Flage to be incredible in fair matchups, and it's not like we're all playing against all combo, I don't think. There's also Path, Dragon's Rage Channel, or Luminarch, but those... I'd rather just take the cards just like a 10 out of 10 against a fair deck, rather than take a card that's just okay against a bunch of different decks. I need to cut some cards. Rite of Flame's not actually looking good. Neither is Through the Breach. And... I kind of like the rest. I guess Grim Lava Mancer I might cut as well. 
<laughs> so this is 15, 16 land right now. I also could cut Faithless Looting based on depending. Or like, given where I'm at with FOMO, Epicure, Bitter Triumph, and Season Pyro as four discard outlets. Plus, I also have a Kolagon's Command. You can target yourself with this if you really are in, in, a, in a bind. Oh, uh, this is an easy gut. I mean, I like Caustic Bronco and Emperor of Bones, but gut is just incredible. Makes me glad I took that Pentide Prism. It just puts so much pressure on the opponent. I mean, honestly, I might just take out Archon, Necromancy, Life Death, or something like that. I mean, Necromancy is still probably good enough, but I could take out Archon and Life Death and maybe maybe K Command. And this is now 19 land, so I have two slots. I mean, we'll see where we end up. Though, I guess at that point, I would also take out the Voldoran Epicure. I just am not sure I want to support the Reanimate stuff. Okay. Here, there's a Persist, but I'm already not wanting to do that. There's a Woodfall Primus, which is really good with Necromancy. It's okay with Life Death. I think I'll just take Blood Tide, though. Blood Tide is sick with Gut and Bombardiers. Just gives you more just crap to throw. <laughs> That's all I want. Oh, now I'll just take Chain Lightning. I'm just turning into a uh, Mardu Aggro deck. That, that's just going to be my plan here. Voldarn Epicure. No, actually, I like Voldarn Epicure with Gut and Bombardiers, even without the Reanimate theme. I mean, this is now 17 land right now. So, yeah, like this looks pretty good. And it also makes the Dark Confidant better, too. Not that that's a huge issue. Here, there's Death Greeter's Champion and Chromatic Star. Death Greeters also makes Name Sticker better, and it's pretty nice with Unearth. Yeah, I'm in for Death Greeters. Now there's Carnage Interpreter, but I just picked up a lot of threes. What is this card? Four mana, three, three, flying. Inklings can attack your Planeswalkers you control. Whenever a player attacks one of your opponents, the attacking player creates a tap to... Oh, so basically it's a four mana, three, three, flying that when you attack them, you make a, an Inkling. The, the, the Inklings can't attack you text. It's not super relevant. <laughs> All right, fair. Uh, I think I'll just take Galvanic Discharge over Carnage Interpreter. I just don't need another three here. I mean, I don't even know if I'm going to play the Galvanic Discharge. Oh, I will play Magda, though, for sure. Badlands didn't wheel, but that's not too big of a surprise. Oh, my mana's okay. I don't have tons of black cards. I don't really have double black. And I've got Troll as a black-white land, and then two Tri-Lands with Arid Mesa and Prismatic Vista. So two duels, two Tri-Lands, Pentad Prism, and then... Magda and Raghavan can both make treasures. I do need to cut some cards here now, though. Oh, Pyrokinesis. I don't know that I'll main deck it, but it's going to be an excellent sideboard card if I play against uh, an aggro deck. I could cut Fear of Missing Out here, I guess. I'm not really animating so much. I think Necromancy with all these really powerful threes is still fine. Dragon's Rage Channeler. I do like that one as well. Maybe that's better than Kellen. And, oh, Emperor Bones and Caustic Bronco. These cards are both really good. Um, I'm going to go with Emperor of Bones, I think. And, honestly, maybe I just sideboard the Flage. It's really good if when I bring it in. And I've got Fire Covenant for the fair matchups. <laughs> There's a Persist a Feywild Caretaker with three cards left in the pack. I guess it's a weird card. People might not have, like, really read it or something. I don't really want to cut any of these things. Samwise is also pretty nice, though I don't think I want to run it. Maybe I cut the Dragon's Rage Channeler. I, I guess I don't have that many non-creature spells. All right. Because I think I want to play 16 land plus a troll. I could go one less. If I were to go one less, would I add back in Dragon's Rage or would I do something else? Let's take a look here. I've got... Oh, a Galvanic Discharge might actually just be the answer. It's a pretty efficient card, and they can play 16 land plus a, or 15 land plus a prism plus a troll. It's that or pyrokinesis, but I think I'd rather have galvanic discharge. All right, here we are. Yeah, all right, I, I'm I'm in. So if I play one planes, I'll have one, two, three, four plus trolls, five white sources for three white cards, and then I have pentad prism and two treasure makers, and. Let's see, so six, seven, eight red. Oh, I kind of want nine red, and this is five, six, seven, eight, nine black. I mean, honestly, it might be that I just play, I just cut the Galvanic Discharge just because I want another, I just want, need another land to have the resources I want. So I think this is how I'm going to run it. I'll, I'll be a little heavy on lands, but I have a lot of good threes. All right, time for round one. 
This hand looks great. Turn one Raghavan, turn two, a buffet of great two drops. Also, my deck's got a really good sideboard plan against any fair deck. I'm starting with like most of the stuff against unfair decks, but imagine citing in Grim Lava Mancer, Galvanic Discharge, Pyrokinesis, K Command, Flage. Like, it sounds like that would be quite effective. All right. Raghavizi. I didn't intend for my first Power Max Cube, my first return to cubing to be a fair Mardu aggro with no power, but you know what? Here we are. Oh, playing against green. That's good. I mean, obviously I would like to uh, get, a, get get to sideboarding against this deck, but turn on Raghavan on the play is pretty much great. Hit Breeding Pool. Let's go Blood Tithe Harvester. I think that uh, Kite Sail Freebooter, if it was Deep Cavern bad, I would have been more inclined to do it. <laughs> Whoa. Where's his bobble? All these future sight frames here. All right. Revealed an Emperor of Bones. Sure. But I think the the fact that uh, this couldn't take creatures made me a little less inclined, though, of course, they now didn't. Uh... <laughs> Let's... I'm going to Blood Tithe the Noble, so I'll just do that regardless. Let make them spend their mana first. All right. It's good attacks. Okay, they're converting. Now I'm definitely going to want to freebooter them this turn. I also have Emperor of Bones to get back Blood Tithe at some point, which would be pretty nice. And if I hit something expensive, Name Sticker Goblin is going to go ham. And by exp hit something expensive, I mean with Rogavon, of course. Here's a saga. Um, I have five mana. I could name sticker here. Yeah, and then play both my things, but that's just sacking two treasures to, well, an additional treasure to play a name sticker. I don't think I need to do that. Let's go Kite Sail Freebooter. Cryptic Coat Remand Brazen Borrower. I'll take the Cryptic Coat and then I'll play Emperor of Bones. Remand is going to be pretty easy to play around given <laughs> the situation. Huh, they played and used Converter instead of playing Cryptic Coat. I guess the Blood Tithe could kill the Coat token, but I'd have to pay two. So they weren't blocking Raghavan either way. Well, it's not working great for them, I feel like, regardless. Um, it's good to attack. It's Emperor of Bones, the Blood Tithe. It makes my Unearth a little bit worse, but getting to put the Blood Tithe into play at some point seems like it'd be pretty good. They can bounce Raghavan with Brazen Borrower. Can't say that that scares me too much. And let's see. I guess they can also just let me Raghavan because now, ha ha ha, this is really funny because the reason I was saying it is because they have a Remand, but now if they use their Currency Converter, then I get to cast Subtlety. So I actually think they kind of messed up there. I couldn't cast Subtlety and get it remanded, but now I can do this. I mean, they can Brazen Borrow the Subtlety, but... Uh, hold on, is that good? If they Brazen Borrow the Subtlety... They're not going to be able to do it end of turn, though, so let's... Yeah, let's... Let's uh, let them... Let them use the Currency Converter first. I don't think there's too much of a harm in that. All right. Now let's cast Subtlety. Oh, wait, I have to, sorry. I have to use the treasure tokens. It's been a little bit since I've Raghavan, huh? Okay. And pass the turn. And I'm going to use blood to discard this mountain. So I just shouldn't have sacked Godless Shrine untapped, of course. I could also put Blood Tithe Harvester into play end of the turn. If I want. Their hand is Brazen Borrower, Remand, and Lands. Well, no, we don't know everything. We know, I think we actually don't know any of the other two cards in hand because they discarded the planes and played the island. All right, they're making a treasure here. Let's see what they've got. Oh, this is not Brazen Borrower. Fracture Identity or something? Pest infestation, discarding the blood, or killing the blood. Um, 
Sure, I'll sack it. Season Pyro? Oh, that's nice. Oh. Yeah, that didn't really work very well for them. They kind of needed to target their own thing. <laughs> or not do that. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, yeah, so playing against green, I definitely want Galvanic Discharge. I think I want Pyrokinesis and Grim Lavamancer. And I want K-Command because they had Currency Converter. And I kind of want Flage. So that means Freebooter is definitely going out. Voldoran Epic here I think can probably go out. I just kind of have to take... It's one of my weaker cards in general. I could take Unearth out. I mean, they just, they're not going to have that much like removal removal. Maybe I don't. Maybe Flage is just too much. Asking too much on the mana. And... I think Pyrokinesis is generally pretty good, but maybe with Chain Lightning, Galvanic Discharge, maybe the Grim Lava Mancer is better. All right, let's try it like this. If I see enough more small creatures, then maybe the Pyrokinesis comes in, but they, they had a lot of blue cards, which makes that a little bit worse. <laughs> well, this is not a keepable hand, so I will in fact not keep it. Six land K command, not gonna do the trick. That is why we pick Raghavan, huh? Turn on Raghavan on the play, just didn't even really hit anything that was all that good, but it was enough. They're debating whether to keep their hand. Uh, I'm going to mulligan. Okay, they also mulled. And then here, I guess I put back Bitter Triumph. I could also put back Pentad Prism. It's my only white source. No, I'll put back Bitter Triumph. It's probably too greasy, greedy <laughs> to put back the Prism. Okay. If I draw a white source, I'm going to be annoyed, though. Well, whew, I'm really glad I didn't put back the prism, because now there's a decent chance I go turn two prism, turn three fourth Eorlingus. Not into open mana, but we'll see. Turn two Noble into Soul Guide. Yeah, the Soul Guide's not that big of a deal. This is not really a reanimator deck. All right, well, let's just play Pentide Prism here. What I might end up doing is turn three casting K Commander Fire Covenant. And then turn four, fourth year lingus or something along those lines. I hope they just pass and leave subtlety up. That would be totally fine. Or just play a dork. Yeah. All right. Well, it's uh, about to be fire covenant time here. And I'm just going to nug both those right now while they're tapped out. One and two. And then next turn, I've got a big fourth year lingus coming. I could also play a Johnny this turn off Pentad Prism, but it doesn't seem like that's as good as just playing Fourth Theater Lingus. Okay. Yeah, Time Walk's a strong card. Not the best Time Walk turn. I hope they don't crack the Soul Guide because now they have to. They only have one card in their hand. I was just hoping that they would be worried I'd have a reanimate, but seems like that's probably... That would have been a bit ambitious. All right, what are they playing here? Cryptic Coat. Uh, all right, that's pretty annoying. I think I'm just going to pass here. And I assume they're going to bounce the coat. Oh, they did not? Okay. I was going to kill the coat and kill the creature, but, you know, that's fine. They have one card in hand. They're just not attacking either. This is weird, but okay. Play a Johnny. Pass the turn. Ooh, the fourth year Lingus tokens are red and white, which is pretty nice. Are they like they're not? Do they not know they can bounce Cryptic Coat? It was a weird play to to make. All right. Um, well, I guess I'm going to go a different direction then. Let's just get a mountain here. I guess that's all I can get. K command, target player discards a card, destroy target artifact. You discard and I'll destroy the currency converter. And they can use the converter in response, but that doesn't change the fact that they're gonna end up with one card in their hand. And then they're gonna have to discard it if they don't hit a counter spell or whatever. Really crazy for them not to pick up the coat two turns ago. Uh, I don't know. There's not. It's not like they knew my hand. There's not that many cards that would punish you for doing that. And certainly with nothing going on, they want to just re keep recasting the coat. But it's going to work out fine. It's just going to take me a little bit longer. 
you don't really want to exile the pest infestation either. There's no real reason to. All right. And then they discard Parallax Wave. Nice. Because now we're just going to slam. Oh, that Broadside Bomber Ears is also nice, but let's let's just start by casting a fourth year Lingus for six here and attack with everything except a Johnny. All right. There we go. 1 0. Let's keep going. All right, time for round two. I'd like to play first. Oh wow, this hand, this hand has some moves. Let's go. Turn one swamp is fine. It'd be really nice to draw a plains here. A white source, because then if I go turn two a Johnny, turn three gut, that's a disgusting opening. You attack with the Ajani, or if they have nothing to block with, or just the token, turn it into a gut, 4-1, uh, flip a Johnny, make another token, get to lightning bolt something, because guts are red permanent, just all, just crazy good. All right. There's his bobble. Sure. White source? That's a white source. We're just going for it. Oh, they revealed gut. That's actually the best card they could have seen for them, in the sense that, now they know this is coming. <laughs> so, you know, what can you do? If they just go land go here, I might also kite sail freebooter them. I'll have to see what I draw. I think I'm like oust the Ajani or something. Because if they have swords to plashers, they would want to just wait. Prismatic ending. Oh, portable hole. All right. That's reasonable. Um... I could play Prentad Prism and sack it to make... It's basically, you'd want to play a 0 mana 2-1 haste. I actually think that's fine. Because I'm going to just sack the Prism instead of sacking the, the cat. I mean, there's ways this doesn't work out, of course. Like this. Jeez. All right. They kind of had it all there. Portable hole plus Swords to Plashers? Really? All right. Let's see what I draw here. Not like the Pentad Prism was doing too much for me. Um, I'm just going to cast Death Greeter Champion here. I could play Kite Sail Freebooter, but I just feel like I want to spend my mana a little better. Jeskai Control, they're, they're doing a good job here. Let's see. Draw. All right, now I will play the Freebooter. See what we got. A braid, chain lightning, a sphinx they can't play. I'll take the abrade, I guess. Play Voldar and Epicure. All right, I mean, this looks like it's okay. Now they can chain lightning, the freebooter. Oh, what did they draw? At some point, they're going to want to use this abrade, probably. And they did not draw a, a blue source. All right. Hit with these. All right. If they're just going to keep taking damage, that's fine. <laughs> Them drawing non... Oh, what is this? Oh, gold span? Yeah. I'm going to have to kill that here. That was a good draw for them because now they can play this Sphinx in two turns here. Let's see if they abrade. I feel like I'm going to need one more action card to win this game. Name sticker goblin. Um, I'm just going to attack with these. Just play the name sticker. I, they're really being patient on that abrade, which is kind of weird. They're taking a lot of extra damage. Because now what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to cast the Headliner Scarlet anyway. And then they're going to abrade Headliner Scarlet and take five down to two. And then I'm going to kill them with Chain Lightning. Kind of nice. They, I had a great draw. They had a great draw. Looks like I'm, unless they top deck here, I should be. I should be good. Yeah. 
a braid away. I mean, double removal spell, double one mana removal spell into mana leak, chain lightning, a braid. <laughs> it's a lot. So, be interesting to see what I side in here. They get to attack and kill one of my creatures. The other thing is the Sphinx itself doesn't even doesn't even get them out of this. Like, they need to draw something else on top of that, and I have Chain Lightning. Because they can attack with the Sphinx and cast one of their removal spells on my 2-2, two -two, and then I have 3 power there at 2. I think they should have abraded this 2 and 4 turns ago or whatever. I think the way they played this was crazy, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> I just don't think... I don't think you can go from 10 to 7 when I know you have a braid in hand. It's just kind of wild to do that. All right, well, I'm going to go for it here. If they had something, they would have they would have attacked. So not much of a bluff there. All right. Uh, the all removal deck, I kind of want K-Command because it also kills Soul Ring. Kite Tail Freebooter does seem good in general. Epicure is not as good against all the removal. Samwise would be, but I'm worried about I won't have the white mana in time. There's, Flage is kind of interesting. It's not good against Swords to Plowshares, but it's not bad otherwise. I mean, Chain Lightning is also kind of weak. It kills the Sphinx, but at Sorcery Speed, which is pretty bad. And, whereas, like, and it doesn't kill Goldspin, whereas Swords and Bitter Triumph are good. So the question is, one, two, three, four. Like, I just... Didn't really get there on the fixing for Flage. There's Kellen as a one drop that they kind of have to deal with. Okay. I guess I'll try that. Let's see. What we've got here. Well, <laughs> definitely keeping this hand. Turn one, Raghavan. Turn two, Dark Confidant. Turn three, Name Sticker into Headliner Scarlet. Works for me. If you think about it, draw stepping the Urza's Bobble is 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 like a really bad place to do it because I'm gonna play two cards or I'm gonna play a land and maybe a spell on turn one. You don't want to hit one of those with Bobble. You should just let me play my cards first and then Bobble to see if something remaining. So it's kind of interesting to. It's like the Abraid play. Like my opponent is making like love trying to make like level two plays, but they're just leveling themselves. They know enough to like bobble on a different timing than just right away, which is generally right. But they don't know enough to actually bobble at the right time. It's just kind of funny how that turns out. Hmm. I mean, I assume this is not going to work, but we'll see. Oh, <laughs> score. I had an abraid. All right, well, let's play Kite Sail Freebooter here. If this gets countered, that's fine with me. Okay. Invert polarity and balance. Balance is part of the reason I wanted to do that. All right, yeah, I'll take the balance. And they have Caves of Chaos Adventure, Invert Polarity and Lands. Well, I guess I won't cast anything into Invert Polarity, will I? Okay, they're getting a... No, they can't get a Plains with that. They have to get an Islander Mountain. Okay. Now they're going to play an Island. And I guess leave up Invert Polarity. Unless they've drawn something else. They could, if they drew a one mana removal spell, they could kill my Kite Sail Freebooter. I guess Chain Lightning would be the spell. And then they could cast Balance. Wouldn't be that good because they'd have to lose a land. They drew a Soul Ring. Well, that, that was a pretty good draw. Jeez. Okay. Yeah, that was lucky. Okay. Well, they have the initiative now. Now I wish I'd kept that chain lightning in. Soul ring, huh? Let's see what I draw. I mean, I still feel pretty good about this. Let's start with the name sticker goblin. Let's see what we roll. If we roll a six, it's going to be sick. Oh, because now I can go headliner scarlet. You can't block. And then cast death greeter. <laughs> And then we'll make the Headliner Scarlet deal double damage. I could have made Raghavan deal more, but I don't really think I need to do that. I'll get a Plains, sure. And what did I exile? A Chandra? All right, I'll pass the turn. They need to find a way to kill uh, <laughs> to kill the Kite Sail Freebooter pretty badly. 
though it doesn't even necessarily get them out of it. Like I end up with headliner Scarlet in play still. They're gonna attack most likely. Oh, they didn't even attack. Okay. Um, let's exile the headliner Scarlet card first. That's a mountain. And then I'm gonna forge on the name sticker. Just put it on my weakest one. And just go to attack. Okay, I'll attack with everything. <laughs> Easy game. Easy game. 2-0. Oh. Let's let's see how the finals goes. Alright, well, I'm gonna mulligan this time. And keeping this hand, and I guess what am I gonna put back? I'm not putting back Godless Shrine, Magda, or Blood Tithe, or Mountain, obviously. Well, the first one. So it really is, do I want to keep put back one of the threes or my third land? Can you go put back Necromancy? This isn't the best Necromancy deck. I kind of feel like putting back a third land is just a little, is asking for trouble if they, like, kill my Magda. And we'll see. Delighted Halfling, okay. <laughs> it's funny for being, like, the Power Max <laughs> cube played against blue-green stuff and... Uh, just guy control, and then now blue green stuff again. Though their draw looks pretty nice. I'm gonna probably in a bit of trouble here. Putting us a lot of soul rings. This is a ballista or something? Oh, jacked rabbit for two, huh? Um. Guess I'll Deep Cavern Bat and hope to draw Fire Covenant. All right, I'll take Swords to Plow Shares. Yeah, if I draw Fire Covenant, I'll, I'll probably I'll be in good shape. I'll be ahead. <laughs> All right, that that actually is fine because I still need I just need Fire Covenant in order to win anyway. Though the funny thing is they can actually use Guide of Souls this turn because they make three rabbits, get a bunch of energy, and then probably make. I mean, you could make the rabbit bigger. Obviously, that's kind of going all in on that. Or you could make the delighted halfling bigger. My inclination is to make the delighted halfling bigger. Yeah. All right, I'll take six. Let's see if I can fire covenant my way out of this one. They have no cards in hand. Bitter triumph. Well, uh, I got 11, sure. Kill the jacked rabbit, I guess, and send for one. I'm not blocking. So now I'm taking seven down to five, and then I attack and I go up to six. The next turn I can play three creatures. Name sticker. Here, I want to roll low this time so I don't use up the good high rolls. All right, I rolled average. And Blood Tithe. And I'm at five, going to six. I don't actually think I want to use the Blood Token. I think Dark Confidant could actually be okay here. Well, maybe not against the Delighted Halfling, I guess. Thing is, if I draw an answer to the Delighted Halfling, I will like having the Dark Confidant in play. Oh, they drew another spell. That's no good. Arwen? Okay. Well, Pyrokinesis is definitely coming in here. As are basically this, like all the cards I sideboarded the first time. So what are they doing here? Are they going to attack with everything? Or just the halfling? No, they're sending it all. All right, so I go to three. Yeah, I mean, I don't die here. I'm blocking like this so that if they want to save the Guide of Souls, I, I my other two creatures live. If they want to win one of the fights against, like, Blood Tither or whatever, then, yeah. All right. All right, all right. I go to two. Emperor of Bones. All right. Discard Dark Confidant. I don't really think there's anything I can draw that gets me out of this anyway. Go to three. No. All right. Um... 
Let's go. Definitely want Galvanic Discharge, Pyrokinesis, Kologon's Command, Grim Lava Mancer. Could take out Epicure. Could take out Necromancy. Take out Kite Sail Freebooter. I still think Deep Cavern Bat is good. I like the rest of the stuff a fair amount. I could take out Ragavan, but on the play, I think Ragavan's still really good. Maybe I take out Unearth as well. All right, let's run it. I would like to play first. Sure. This has a lot of my really good cards. I don't want to view dungeon information. Uh, you need to draw a black source, of course, but I have a Swords to Plowshares. If they play a one drop, i probably use it. Well, not a Guide of Souls. Yeah, that's going to be tough. Okay. Well, if I draw a Swamp, I might be in an okay shape. Uh, there goes the hope they didn't have uh, all their colors. Arwen? Well, I have a good answer to Arwen. So that's Swords Arwen. Draw. Mountain's a really bad draw. Uh, let's play Gut. I mean, it's Gutter Bombardiers. And this way, I, if I draw something better to sacrifice, I'd rather sack it to Gut most likely to start with. We'll see what they play. A Johnny is just my best draw here, I would assume. Assuming the Gut doesn't die. But even if it does, I have a Bombardiers as backup. Bristly Bill, okay. Okay, maybe they don't have another play here. Here's where Voldar and Epicure would have been good. Though, I wouldn't be able to attack with Gut anyway. Though, no, I'd play Voldar and Epicure. No, I wouldn't even kill Bristly Bill with uh, Bombardiers. There's something else here? It's not great for me if they do. Okay. Just draw. Oh, upkeep Swordsing. <laughs> Is that what's happening? Oh, it could be Path. All right, I actually don't mind that because I really did need that Swamp. Uh, let's go Grim Lava Mancer, Bomba. Attack, and I'm not gonna actually sack the Grim to kill Bristly Bill. I have Fire Covenant in hand. I think one of the ways I win this game is just getting to kill multiple creatures off Fire Covenant. And Grim is also just pretty good in general. So I'm hoping they're playing like Jacked Rabbits and other, just other creatures. I don't really don't want to see removal spells. Though Path is a pretty undesirable removal spell to use because it gives me a Swamp. So I kind of imagine they don't have other removal in hand. Okay. Seasoned Dungeoneer is actually fine. I mean, they're going to get the initiative here. But... I'm going to take probably four. If, well, they might not even pump the Bristly Bill. They might pump something else. So I'll take three or four damage. They'll gain a life. And then I'm going to take another five, ten damage. <laughs> but, oh, even better, I'll take 12 damage. And then they're going to have one card in hand, and I'm going to have the initiative. And I'll get to get a Swamp and Deep Cavern Bat their last card. Hope, hope, you know, if it's a spell. Oh, they didn't even attack me? Well, you love to see that, honestly. Two, four, two. Fire Covenant, huh? <laughs> what a card. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to hit with both. I don't have enough ammunition for Grim that I think it's worth keeping it back. Get a Swamp. Swamp. Deep Cavern Bat. Take Staff of the Storyteller. All right, here we go. <laughs> yeah, we turned that one around pretty nicely, didn't we? They get to crack their clue. And, uh... Better be something pretty good, because... I'm going to get to Forge on the Deep Cavern Bat here. Start lifelinking. I can play Troll of Cause of Doom. I mean, if they play a creature, I can pr probably kill it. If I need to, I won't play the troll. I'll just use the uh, Grim Lava Mancer and maybe throw the Grim Lava Mancer. So we'll see. Nadu. Jeez, okay. Wow, that is actually really good. Um, 
Hmm. Now I think I'm going to forge the Bombardier. Oh, what a draw. Headliner Scarlet. I kind of wish I'd forged the other way. Headliner Scarlet, you. I think I'm just going to attack for a bunch. And I could throw... I think I'll sack Headliner Scarlet to take them to five. Because now they're just dead to me getting the initiative again and trapping them. They get to hit me with the Nadu and take the initiative. That doesn't really intrinsically matter. Like, they get to go to Forge or Lost Well. I guess Forge lets them draw another card off Nadu, which is kind of strong. But if they don't kill the Bombardiers, it's going to kill them by itself. And even if they do, yeah, Forge kills them. All right. Well, <laughs> it's really a Fire Covenant or Bust in some, some senses. Not just or Bust, but Fire Covenant's going to be really good. Hmm... Yeah, I feel pretty good about this. On the draw here, maybe we'll fade a soul ring this time. All right. Yeah, I mean, this is a keeper. This is potentially a a nice, like, empty my hand with pyrokinesis. <laughs> All right, sure. Uh, into pyromancer hand. Well, there's fire covenant. Fire covenant's good. Is it better than soul ring? I guess we'll try and find out. What do we got to turn two seasoned engineer? No, it's a Guide of Souls. Okay, into Giver of Runes. Well, Giver of Runes is pretty good. Let's see. Um, I think what I'm going to do here is just Chain Lightning the Giver of Runes. Play a Swamp. And just pass. I, I could have pyrokinesis but I, I don't know that I want to do that yet. Guess they once again are not stuck on just white. Oh, they have Trop in hand, or they didn't want to fetch it for some reason. Huh. What is this? Jacked Rabbit. X equals two. Okay. Hmm. And the Thraben Inspector. All right. Guess what we're casting on turn three. You'll <laughs> you'll never be able to tell. I mean, Covenant on three here, I'm sure they're going to give this the flying counter. So I'm going to go to 17, and then I'm going to take another nine. I'm going to go to eight here, or take another 10. Okay. And I'm probably going to take one off my land here. Uh, let's just get red. I don't have a white card in hand, and I have double red. Two, four... Four. Boom. All right. They have one card in hand. I have some good plays to make. And Pyrokinesis means I'll be able to make two plays in the same turn. So what do I play now? Okay, they didn't have anything. Let's draw. I think I'm going to go Magda into Grim. I'm probably pitching Death Greeters of these three drops is my guess to Pyrokinesis. Do oh, they have a counterspell? Oh, memory lapse, sure. Interesting, so next turn, we'll see what we do. It kind of depends on what they have. I really don't want to see Nadu. That's, that would be one of the more annoying ones. Uh, I could play Gut. The problem with playing Gut is I feel like it wouldn't accomplish that much. Playing, like, I think I want to play Magda and just get Magda gut going, or try to. And I'm going to pass with Grim up here, because I think attacking for one is fairly irrelevant, and getting to ping a creature or something could be pretty nice. Bristly Bill or something like that. Sika's Chariot. That's a good one, but Grim Lavamancer and Pyrokinesis both do some pretty good work against it. Fire one off here, draw. Um, land, I think I play the gut here. And go to attack. And hope they don't, oh, they have path. Oh, the sword's even worse. Ah, all right, keep having it. It's fine, I think still doing okay here. 
Oh, they took it. Okay. And if they play a creature to activate the chariot, I hope it's not too good of a creature. Staff of the Storyteller. Okay, I mean, that is pretty good, but not the end of the world. Here I get to probably Pyrokinesis at some point here, pitching Death Greeter. So they draw now. Samwise. Oh. That's a little aggressive. Okay. I mean... So now they're going to crew the Asika's Chariot. They have no cards in hand? All right, I, I think we're doing okay here. Um, Pyrokinesis. Two to the Chariot, one to each of the tokens. Or each of the one toughness creatures. Exile and Death Greeter. Mm. And then finish off the Chariot. <laughs> Then now, I wouldn't mind drawing a land or a cheap spell. Yeah, I think that's still better just to have in play than, than to discard. And then Season Pyro here, draw two. Land and attack for three. All right. This is a close game. They burned through a lot of my stuff. They had the swords for the gut. If they didn't have that, they were basically just dead. I'm going to dash Raghavan here in a second. They do get to draw a card off their staff, which they should have done before going to attacks. That didn't really make sense. I think they might have just clicked through or something. I don't know. Basically, I'm ahead here, but not by a lot. All right. If they draw another token maker, if they draw like a Nadu, these are all things that could be pretty problematic. If I draw another removal spell, then I'm really cruising. It's also kind of nice that the Grim just trading kind of benefits me in general. And then next turn I'm going to dash Raghavan and send with the... Okay, they drew a land. I don't mind that. Oh, wow, that was really good. All right. Dash Raghavan. I think it's just worth getting an extra damage here. Uh, I'll send with the Grim. If they want to block the Grim Lava Mancer and I get to hit them with Raghavan, I'm okay with that. I just didn't think they were, that was going to happen. I'm not using Grim this turn. I don't have any cards in my graveyard. So I play Dark Confidant. Okay. This is what this deck's trying to do. Fire Covenant MVP. Let's go. This is the turn. They needed to draw something good this turn or their, their outs surely get pretty slim. Well, it's an expensive card. <laughs> Seasoned Dungeoneer. Uh, all right. Let's see how that works for them. I don't think it's going to work all that well. I mean, they got to play it. But, like, assuming the card they had in their hand already wasn't anything, because they didn't play it last turn. Oh, no. It was something. Which one of these? They didn't play the Seasoned Dungeoneer last turn. Now I'm going to lose? Oh, my God. All right. <sighs> At least I didn't burn the troll. Um... Man, really? This was brutal. All right. Uh, we'll attack with the Deep Cavern Bat, I guess. Damn, they double top deck there. All right, well, let's go get a Plains. Not that it's, like, super relevant. Land. Troll of Casa Doom. Okay, it's going to be a close one. Troll was actually a pretty good draw because now they can attack. Oh, they need to use Arwen before attack. Really? Were they just dead? Hold on. Let me go look at this board. So let's say that they clearly drew a blank. Let's say they drew a blank. They, they Arwen this, attack. Let's say they flip a spell. They gain five. They go to 15. They take the initiative and forge the Arwen, maybe. On my turn, I flip with Bob. If I flip a five drop, I'm dead. So clearly already conceding was just crazy bad to do. They're at 15. I attack them. They take six. They go to nine. They go to eight. They block this. They take four. 
go to four and I grim them to two and then I get to go hit the forge that doesn't do anything. All right. I can't see my top cards, but premature concession, we take those and uh, a trophy in my first power max with <laughs> pretty much the, the fairest <laughs> red black deck you can imagine that sided in a bunch of removal spells every game. But hey, I mean, Gut, Season Pyro, Death Greeter, Bombardier, Name Sticker, all these red cards work really well together. Had a little bit of disruption, a little bit of, uh, you know, like discard. I never really got to pop off with the Johnny, but it looked like it was going to. And I had like a Swords and plus Fire Covenant just got the job done. So fun draft and uh, I'll be trying to get some more of these in. But as always, uh, you know, with the twins and all, it won't be a regular upload, at least not for a bit. In any case, thanks for watching. I appreciate you hanging out and I will see you next time for some more Power Max Q. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel and you won't miss a single draft.